Hey, Battle Bill here with another video. Getting some more practice Go Battle League battles. These taking place in the Flying Cup meta. Also against my Twitch viewers. We have a collection of five battles. Now, you may have noticed as recently, Niantic O'Clock has just passed and the metas have swapped from Great League, Ultra League, and Master League to a combination of Great League and Flying Cup. I do have intentions of playing both metas, but I figure because this is the first time we're seeing the Flying Cup meta in this season, I'd put out a team with my sleeper pick for Flying Cup battles, along with the team comp that does not include Aerodactyl. Now, why is Gligar my sleeper pick for the Flying Cup meta? It's because Shadow Gligar specifically beats Aerodactyl and with that ground flying typing, it does well against those little pesky electric types like Amolga that you're gonna see all over the Flying Cup meta running rampant. So, we got some battles against my viewers. Let's jump into them right now. I'll show you how well this team of three performs along with how well Shadow Gligar can perform. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe as always, and we're going to be jumping right into these battles. So, we have Shadow Gligar against an Altaria. This is not a positive matchup for the Shadow Gligar. So our goal here is to throw a little bit of the Night Slash damage, maybe hope for a boost on the first try. That's also the, uh, the cool thing about Shadow Gligar, like Aerodactyl with Ancient Power. It has the potential for boost that can help it flip some matchups even when it's at a disadvantage. We need it to catch though because we did not get that boost. We catch a Sky Attack on our Skarmory. It being the Steel type eats all that damage really well. And then our opponent decides to bring in a Gligar against our Skarmory, which is not a very positive matchup for them because of the fact that we resist their wing attacks and we're going to be dealing a bunch of neutral damage. We're going to be Steel Winging away, applying that fast move pressure. We don't want them to boost on us with all the Night Slashes that they they're going to throw, but we're going to essentially commit to a farm down and hope that we will survive this Night Slash that's about to come through, which we should just barely, and it's going to allow us a flip switch on top of the fact that Altaria has no energy, so it's huge. My opponent comes in with their own Skarmory here. We're going to throw a Sky Attack. It's not going to do a bunch of damage, but there is a Shadow Skarmory, so it does a little bit more damage, and we have a great matchup here. Because we were able to eat that Sky Attack on our Skarmory, we don't mind the Gligar being matched up with this Altaria. So we bring in the Amolga against the Skarmory. Armory, and now we have our Gligar on their Altaria, and their Altaria is practically done with the combo of Gligar and Amolga against their Skarmory. This is GG's, and even in a practice battle, our opponent decides to top left. Getting to the next matchup, we have an even more terrible matchup for our Gligar in the lead with Articuno on Gligar. Gligar is ground and flying, so it's going to be taking double super effective from all of the ice damage it's throwing. We safe swap a Molga, and then our opponent safe swaps in a Gyarados. Quite the play. It's looking good for us. It's looking like we might be able to flip switch because our electric is going to be double super effective against their uh, water flying type mom. But Gyarados is so heavy on attack, the Dragon Bats are eating it up a bit. We do win the one shield. Our opponent decides to come in, commit to a farm down, and Amolga is essentially just popping off now, getting off another dis discharge, getting our opponent's last shield. We need to come into Skarmory here because we flip switch. They're going for a charge move here. We are going to let it come through. It's going to be an Icy Wind. And then our opponent decides to swap, and they're running an Ice Flyer Double Water Flyer line. I love it. Ice Double Water. The Ice type ca uh, covering essentially the electric dam uh, the electric flyer weakness that both of these Water Flyers have in the back. Say all oh, this 10 times fast. I guess I don't really need to specify flying, considering the fact that every mod in this meta is going to have flying typing. But we don't want our uh, Gligar match up with the Mantine, and essentially we tried to make a big call, and we ended up eating an Ice Beam, which is why Mantine is another really good pick in these Flying Cup battles, and Gligar does need to watch out for this opponent's entire team. The combo of the Ice type being double super effective, and the Water types being super uh, single super effective against our uh, Gligar was very unfortunate for this matchup, and us not calling that Ice Beam that just happened a little while ago from the Mantime on the Gligar is going to be what costs us this match. We're trying our best to at least get rid of the Articuno, but that Mantine is alive with just enough health. They get to a move. We're hoping to steel wing down. Our steel wings being resisted. Their wing attacks being resisted. And they get to a bubble beam to complete that match. Getting to the next matchup, we have another negative lead. So we're just, we're getting negative matchup after negative matchup. But Gligar still performing well in the back, which is super ideal. And also goes to show how strong this team comp is because of the fact that we've lost two leads and almost flipped both of them. Just barely lost the second one. As we save swap Skarmory and they brought an Aerodactyl, Skarmory on Aerodactyl is a great matchup for Skarmory because of the super effective steel wing damage. Our opponent comes in with their man time. Our Skarmory's on plenty, so we have no problem committing 
to letting them ice beam us. They decide they'll bubble beam bait, we call it. We build all the way up to a brave bird here. Gonna do a huge chunk of the man times health. Problem is now we're going to get farmed down. At least we flip switch and we can line the Amolga up with the man time. We're expecting this to be an ice beam also, which it's not, ends up being a bait. And because of the fact that we've called two baits now, we're fully expecting this one to be an ice beam and we decide to shield. So we were not we were fine essentially letting our, man, our Amolga go down there just because the, uh, Mantine was so low and this was supposed to be a Gligar feature, but keeping Amolga alive ends up paying dividends because it's able to deal some damage against the Altarium, do a little bit of chip, or throw in some Night Slashes. Our opponent shields the first one, which is a bit of a mistake because now we've boosted on the next one. The wing attacks are adding up. We're going to shield the Sky Attack because we've boosted. We're going to be able to chunk away at the Altarium, not just with our potential Night Slashes, but with the fast moving attack damage that we're dealing. So we get their second shield, hoping to outpace into another one. They do outpace us though they're gonna take our Gligar out but all that shield pressure is going to allow our Molga to come in relatively comfortably our opponent tries to catch a move they swap too soon Altaria practically dead going for a Thunderbolt here will take out the Altaria's remaining health and we're gonna get a dub in this match this charge would have been enough there but regardless want to confirm our win getting into the next match we have Gligar on the Skarmory where are all the Aerodactylites? Honestly, out of all five of my viewers that we end up battling here, we don't get a lot of uh, Aerodactyl matchups other than the previous match. So Gligar, not super happy about this lead either. We decide to swap. Our opponent goes for a Bray Bird, and then they decide to dip, which is a huge play on their part because they needed that damage to land our Skarmory since their back line seems to be quite weak to our Skarmory here. They come with a Shadow Articuno, a very nice Sleeper Spice pick there. And uh, we're getting off another Sky Attack. Gonna do a good chunk to the Articuno, almost flip switch. Switch, but because we want to keep that Skarmory away from our Gligar, we gotta flip switch. So we shield what could have been, well, which would have been an Ancient Power to take us out, could have given them a boost. They then come in with their Skarmory and their Air Slashing us, which is not doing a bunch of damage, but is giving them a decent amount of energy generation. We are now able to align our Amolga onto the Skarmory, get our opponent's last shields here. Not too worried about anything they throw because of our electric typing, but we are going to protect our Amolga because they're protecting their Skarmory, so they must be quite weak in the back to it, which, yeah, they kind of are. This is a neutral matchup. We're going to go for a Thunderbolt on our Amolga onto their Altaria, and we need to bring in our Gligar here to essentially... Uh, keep the alignment the way it is the way we want it to be to win but i guess because we know amolga can survive and get off another thunderbolt we just want to confirm our dub this thunderbolt is not going to take out the altaria we're going to come with a gligar get a bit of a farm down and with our full health gligar and their skarmory practically almost dead we're going to throw a couple night slashes this opponent essentially quits also but they didn't top left so we got to finish them off apply the remaining damage and again like i said Team comp, I'm liking a lot here. We do have Aerodactyl answers. I know we're not seeing a bunch of them, but Gligar does well against it. Skarmy does well against it. The only concern is really Amolga against it. But of course, you can't build a team that... Well, you could build a team that triple hard counters Aerodactyl, but I'm sure that would create other holes, and we want to build something that is balanced. Getting into this next matchup, we're trying to pull the same thing we did in the first match, catch a Sky Attack. We're not able to. This Altaria is farming to goddamn 300 energy. It's insane. They come in with a Mandibuzz, another interesting pick in these uh, Flying Cup battles. Mandica Mandibuzz being a very spammy mod and super bulky. You do have to watch out for it. We're going to let a charge move come through. Going to be a foul play here. We're going to build all the way up to the Bray Bird because Mandibuzz are so tanky. Players that run their mana buzzes don't like to shield them, so we are essentially not getting the two moves because of the Steel Wing energy generation. So we're going big on the Brave Bird to flip switch, and we land the Brave Bird there, which is going to be huge for us. They come in with a man time to farm us all the way down, which is unfortunate, even though we are going to be able to uh, line up our Amolga here onto the man time. Um... We still have to worry about the Altaria on Gligar matchup, and their Altaria has a bunch of energy from before. So this essentially became like an Amolga showcase because we were not running into the Electrics and Aerodactyls, and I can't really control what my viewers run. They're running what they genuinely want to run in practice battles because we're all just trying to prep for the new upcoming meta if we decide to participate in it. But uh, I promise you, if we ran into more Aerodactyls and more Electric uh, Flying Mons, Gligar would have popped off. And it had a bit of its own little showcase situations here. We're able to take out that Altaria there. They come in with the Man Time. We're going to get off another Night Slash. You do get to see here how spammy Gligar can be. Also threatening another shield. And then also the pure fact that the boost exists. Because we know Omolga can finish this off though, we decide not to shield our Gligar and keep it alive even though we are boosted and we're going to come with the Molga to do the double super effective discharge to win 
this final match of the set of battles. So that's a collection of five practice battles. I like this team a lot. I vouch for it hard. Let me know your thoughts on the team. I really like Shadow Gligar in this meta. Hoping when I do decide to do flying cup battles that I run into more Aerodactyls or, and more Electric Flying Mons, you know, specifically like the Amolgas that we were talking about in the beginning of the video. But again, give me your thoughts. Let me know what metas you're planning to do. I think I'm going to start off with Open Great League and then hopefully make some gains ELO-wise there because Flying Cup can be a bit RPS-y. And we do want to be careful when we're trying to climb because I really, really, really want to start making my push. And I think I have a solid meta Great League line that pushed me over the hump because the past like week and a half, I've been struggling quite a bit. I cannot take credit for that team that I'm running an open Great League, but I can take credit for this team. Again, like I said, please comment below, support the video. It's greatly appreciated. I'll also have the video out on the open Great League team very soon. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe, and I will see you all in the next video.